Hello and welcome to our first preview show of 2019. We hope you all had a wonderful new year and are all looking forward to what's to come over the next 12 months. Today I'm joined by Matchday commentator Chris Temple and we'll be talking very much about the here and now. So let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at the Watford game and the 3-3 draw here at Vitality Stadium. We'll also be turning our attention to the January transfer window and then the incomings or outgoings that could be happening. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to Brighton in the FA Cup here at Vitality Stadium tomorrow. But first, there's just one place to start, and that is with that thrilling 3-3 draw against Watford here at Vitality Stadium. Let's take a look at the short highlights. Femenia now, run made by Decore, inside right, now Semmer to pull it back for Watford. Deeney running onto it with a header, and it's into the back of the net, and it's Troy Deeney against Bournemouth again. 14 minutes gone, and Watford strike an early blow here. And the Cherries' positive start unravels at the hands of Troy Deeney, or rather the head of Troy Deeney, 1-0. formation, Gosling's ball is presented straight to Delafeu, and now Watford on the counter-attack, Delafeu up against Ake, Dini's with him, he's got support to the right as well, Delafeu challenged by Cook, and Dini puts it in, and it's 2-0 to Watford, individual errors I'm afraid, coming back to haunt the Cherries again, Gosling on the halfway line gave it straight away, and Watford ruthless with their punishment, Cherries nil, Watford 2. Well I think it was Kingy, sorry Cook who got back, and actually got a great tackle in, but the ball just bobbled up and spilled off the red and black shirt, not sure, but Troy Deeney just took advantage of it by side putting it home. Quick trailing 2-0, it's Fraser who floats one towards Steve Cook, the header back in, Gosling, great save, Ake's there again, the head home, the rebound, 2-2 two two for Nathan Ake, he turns to the crowd, clenches his fist, and says this is back on, 12 minutes till half time, or with one, what for two? And it looked like a set play, Cookie peeled off to the far post, headed the ball back across, and Keenan made an amazing save, but Ake was there, and just didn't nod it home for that second goal, as you say, in two games. It's going to be Charlie Daniels, no, it's going to be Ryan Fraser, who whips the free kick in, Wilson, 2-2! Two, two! Cherries have bounced back, two goals in four minutes! Wilson goes to his best ever Premier League season for the Cherries with his ninth goal and his form of two, what for two? Well, I have to say what a header that was, it's a well-worked free kick and I thought, I'm not sure about the keeper of this, at one stage I thought he was getting to that. Over Watford since 1963, Ake jumps with the header on the edge of his own penalty, the shot goalwards, it's 3-2 to Watford, they're immediately back in front through Ken Semmer. It was a long, hopeful ball that the Cherries didn't deal with on the edge of the penalty area, and Semmer swung the left boot and swung the Hornets back into the advantage. 3-2. Oh, what a game we're watching here. Aki jumps for the original header. Cherries right, and the Cherries pile forward again. Early ball into Wilson, he lets it run for King, who steps over for Fraser! It's 3-3! What a start to 2019 this is! Forget the New Year fireworks, it's fireworks on the 2nd of January here. Bournemouth 3, Watford 3, and it's Ryan Fraser. Well, that was a great ball from Stanislaus. I think there were three dummies along the way before it eventually got to Fraser. Kept his head hard and low. 3-3, as you say. What a game this is. Well, there we go, four goals in six minutes, saw the points shared earlier in the week. Full extended highlights are available on AFCB TV for free. Well, Chris, what a game it was. Where do we even start with that? Unbelievable. I mean, let's start with the fact that everybody that came on uh, Wednesday night, it was, it was pretty cold, but they got their money's worth, that is for sure. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing first half. Um, a few people at halftime were predicting there'll be no more goals, um, and they were right. Um, but yeah, just ridiculous. I mean, I, I tweeted my thoughts after the game to say it was a cocktail of attacking quality and chaotic defending, uh, which it was really, because both teams uh, lost the plot defensively. Um, but I think the biggest positive to come out of it, first and foremost, was obviously a point um, but secondly was 
a bit more of the attacking flair that's been missing. It's been there in snatches in recent matches, but you know we, we started to see that sort of wave after wave of, particularly in the second half, the pressure. Um, again, just the final ball. You know, Jefferson Lerma was still searching for a couple of his shots that were heading towards the car park. But um, yeah, the, the Joshua Kings, the, the Callum Wilsons, the Ryan Frasers, the David Brooks streaming forward, even the likes of Dan Gosling. You know, who I know he made a mistake, but I thought he had a, an all-action game as you would expect from him on his first return back. He'd had, had I think, one training session. Um, so to turn in a, a performance like that in a game like that, um, full credit to him for that. Um, but yeah, ultimately Bournemouth probably should have won the game. Um, but everyone comes out afterwards going just like, Phew, what a game that was. Um, and some great goals. You know, I think what was it, at least two dummies for the third goal, maybe even three. And 2 nil down as well. It shows that great character once again. We saw it so much last season, but it was back again. Yeah, I mean, re really, you know, on the canvas, uh, with the recent results and performances, and then 2 nil down after 25 minutes, having started the game quite well, um, yeah, mentally, you've got to be digging really deep there. Thankfully, it didn't stay 2 nil for long. That was the, the key. Nathan Ake um, popping up again, um, as you've seen him do, prowling for those, those bits, and, bits and bobs in the six-yard box. Um, so, yeah, the, the fact that they, they reduced those arrears pretty quickly, because the longer it goes 2 nil, the crowd, start to get a bit aggy everybody gets a bit frustrated you can start trying too hard um, so that was the key I think and then you know once that Nathan Ake goal goes in then it, all hell breaks loose and uh, you know I started to lose count of what was happening to be honest with you and 2-0 down most fans probably would have taken a draw at that point but as you say Bournemouth could have gone on and won it yeah and probably should have you know that again if you're, if you're being harsh you'd probably say that there were certainly enough chances in the second half Watford has the, got to the last 15 or 20 they were certainly seemingly looking happier with a point I think a couple of you know well, certainly one very naughty tackle in the game, which, you know, Decore, amazing when you just see the referee's view, how he's decided it's a yellow card and he's got the assistant looking right at it on the far side as well. So um, just an amazing decision that that wasn't a red card. Um, you know, there was talk about Dan Gosling's as well. For me, that was, a, that was firm but fair. I think yellow was probably right. Officials are looking out for you know, follow-throughs and things these days. Um, you know, we saw Vincent Company for Manchester City get away with what looked a red card tackle as well. So I'm not sure what's happening at the minute with, with some of the decisions. But um, ultimately, yeah, a point's good. Three goals is good. Conceding three in the first half for the third game in a row, not so good. And you say three goals there, but three different scorers as well. Yeah, Nathan Ake, of course, as we say, you know, you need your centre-halves to, to chip in. We see Steve Cook probably more often than Nathan Ake, but three goals for Nathan Ake now. He's probably, what is he, fourth top scorer with that, I reckon, uh, maybe fifth. Um, uh, and obviously, you know, to see uh, Callum Wilson back on the score sheet as well. Um, now in his record Premier League goals tally for a season of nine. He's got 11 if you include his, uh, his cup goal and his England goal as well. Um, so, yeah, from, from that point of view, and Ryan Fraser, of course, with that, that great finish for... The, the third one, and he's already missed a great chance as well. So for him, that was important to put that away. Um, and everyone's seen his interview after the game. That, that face that's doing the rounds on social media over the last couple of days with Troy Deeney. So uh, yeah, that, that was a, a memorable moment for him as well. And of course, it's been such a tough run of fixtures, so it's so important to get a point on the board, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it, like, you know, look at the pressure games of the past few weeks of Brighton here in the league, um, Huddersfield here. They were the pressure games that I had to get something from. Probably need to win, actually, both of those. Um, some would have said, you know, would have said running up to the Watford game, probably need to win that one as well. But it was just such a mad game. That's what everyone ends up talking about. If it had been a, a dull 1-1, one, one, I think everyone would probably be saying, oh, well, do you know what? Point's not very good. But actually, you know, the, all, the game, the way the game panned out, the performance in the game, um, albeit, you know, defensively still porous. But uh, I think that's, you know, it's given everybody a bit of hope. And now we look forward to the FA Cup this weekend. And with those festive fixtures pretty much out of the way now, how do you assess that period? It's been a tough one, but there's been some important points along the way, hasn't there? Yeah, there has been a few important points. Um, November and December hasn't been a good period for Bournemouth in the Premier League. Uh, they seem to get dealt the hard fixtures in those those few months. I, th I don't know if you'd rather have them then than right at the start of the season when you're still trying to find your feet in the season. I think you'd rather probably have a chance to get up and running with a few games that you'd be uh, expecting to get something from. Um, but you definitely don't want them all back-to-back, -back, the big teams. So, yeah, they'll be absolutely delighted to see the back of November, uh, December, rather, wasn't a great month um, but then we're still talking about a record breaking start to the season so it's not like we want to write off 2018 just want to write off the last month of it or so um, but in that month you know Brighton just before Christmas hopefully that result will give them some, some confidence to take into to this weekend and despite those tough fixtures they're, they're still in a very respectable position in the league 12th in the table with all those fixtures out of the way now yeah, you know, won't play Manchester United again this season. That's a, there's there's one of the big six out of the way completely. For example, um, you know, Chelsea not too far away in the, in the fixture calendar as well, so they'll be out of the way as well. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of uh, the, the table, I've said it many times. The middle the middle portion of the table is so tight. Um, you know, West Ham and Brighton drawing in midweek. Cherries and Watford obviously drawing, taking points off each other in that that middle section of the table. 
a win or a, a couple of wins is going to be worth four or five places every time now. Um, the key is just to make sure you stay in that middle section. Keep flirting with the you know, the seventh sort of eighth position rather than the, the 15th, 16th position. That would be the nicer, the nicer thing, nicer end of it to stay. And now moving on to January, we've obviously got the transfer window. Can we expect much business to be happening there? Eddie Howe's favourite time of the year. He particularly loves talking about it, that is for sure not. Um, yeah, I mean, speaking to Eddie after the game at uh, Manchester United, I, I sort of got the, the vibes that he, they weren't that hopeful of, of getting anything done particularly quickly. Um, he just he was, he was couldn't guarantee anything. It was more of a sort of a, we're going to try, but I, I can't say we, we're going to. Um, so I, I don't know, I, just, I got a feeling then that they weren't that close to anything. But um, I think the, the wheels probably are turning a bit faster in the background, whether that was Eddie playing his cards close to his chest or whether things have moved on quickly in the last couple of days. Um, so yeah, they, they certainly need a couple of bodies, I think. As well, for, for mentally as well, you know, to see a, some re reinforcements come in. Um, Dan Gosling's obviously back, so that's a great option to have. Adam Smith, I think, is probably maybe two, three weeks away, possibly, from being back in first team contention. So there's a couple of bodies coming back, but, you know, this is saying they don't pick up any more problems. So I think definitely while you've got the opportunity to strengthen, you need to. Um, right back will be one of the priority areas, I'm sure, with, with Simon Francis out, because they still, if Adam Smith comes back, have only got one right back. Um, I don't know, Eddie wants to have cover. So, uh, yeah, and the outgoings, you know, the talk about Jermaine Defoe going to, to Rangers, it looks like that one's going to happen. No real surprise there because he hasn't had the minutes he would want here. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that Bournemouth would have wanted to give him when they signed him and the amount of money they've been paying him um, as well. So, from that point of view, probably a good move all round, I think. Does make the squad one body lighter, but who's to say that uh, some striking reinforcements won't come in? Who knows? And just in terms of Simon Francis there, Eddie Howe said in his press conference this morning that it was almost like losing a centre-back and a right-back. So it really goes to show how important he is and how much they kind of need to get someone in. To yeah, and when you look at this weekend, I was sort of trying to pick a sort of a ghost team in my head as to what Eddie might do this weekend. And you're looking at sort of central defence or, or the, the number of defenders available. And, and one of the centre-halves regularly, I think, is going to have to play. Um, Nathan Ake had a problem at Old Trafford, so I'd be amazed if he plays uh, in the FA Cup. So I, I, I would guess, as we're standing here now, Steve Cook will probably have to play, um, because even if you play a back three, you still need Steve Cook, uh, let's say Jack Simpson and Tyrone Mings, for example, come in as well, because you haven't got a right back um, to, to put in there. Um, unless they, you know, they play Charlie Daniels or Diego Rico in a back three. But even then, as you move forward, you're trying to start to fill the other holes. And if Jermaine Defoe is, is heading off, he probably won't be involved. So up front, you've got Lise Mousset. And, you know, we'll talk more about this later on. But in terms of options, uh, so yeah, Simon Francis, to go back to your point, covers a couple of positions, can be shuffled around in when cup games come along. We have seen him play cup games. Um, so yeah, the, the defensive options, particularly at the moment, are, are limited, yeah. And in terms of Dan Gosling, it's obviously great to have him back. We know Jefferson Lerma is only one card away from a team match suspension. Is that an area they should be looking to strengthen as well? Well, having Dan Gosling back is, is a bonus. Um, Emerson Hyman obviously has come back from Hibernian um, at the end of his loan. I don't, I'm not sure whether he, he may go out on loan again. He, he, possibly not back to Hibs, but possibly somewhere else. Um, there's, there's talk of that. Um, he hasn't obviously had much of a chance in the Premier League. He's played, played the one game at the back end of last season against Burnley on the last day. Um, he's been in Scotland. He's done pretty well in Scotland, by all accounts, in both the spells he's been there. Of course, the, the SPL, with the greatest respect, isn't the Premier League. So I don't know if he is an option in terms of Premier League, really. So you've got Lerma, Sermon and Gosling. So they, they may be looking at a central midfield area. We've seen Brooks and Stanislas tried there. Um, and, and doing an admirable job filling in, but they're not central midfielders, with the greatest respect to them, their strength are elsewhere. Junior Stanis has his strength, is now right back, so it appears on the, from the other night's performance. Um, but yeah, so central midfield could be an option they're looking at, I think. Um, certainly Gosling being back still needs to be careful with his, his return. Um, Jefferson Lerma, as you say, on the brink of that ban. Probably worth just clarifying that ban as well, because we were talking about the FA Cup game. If Jefferson Lerma was to play against Brighton uh, in the FA Cup, if he gets booked in that game, that's not his 10th booking. There's been a bit of confusion from, I know, from supporters about the change of rules this year. So if he got booked against Brighton, that's, that's one booking in the FA Cup. You need to get booked twice in the FA Cup to miss an FA Cup game. It's completely separate from the Premier League. So hence, if he got booked against Watford in midweek, he wouldn't have been banned for the Brighton game. Any booking he would get if he does play I'm not sure if he will um, wouldn't count for the 10th booking 
And just a word as well on Aaron Ramsdale. He's going on loan to Wimbledon. It'd be great for him to get some minutes as well. Yeah, he's in a difficult position, Aaron Ramsdale, because he um, obviously came down from Sheffield United and um, he's an England age group keeper, England under 20 goalkeeper, um, and has, you know, has done well at the national level. He's, he's, there's a lot of talented English goalkeepers around and he's managed to, to keep himself in the national setup without playing any minutes. He's obviously had loan spells in the past. He went to Chesterfield, didn't he? I think got injured. Um, so I think he's a, another one who would, could do with certainly benefiting from getting some games. Um, he would appear to be, you know, down the pecking order a little bit here um, in terms of he's obviously got Begovic and Boric and, and Mark Travers has been the sort of next cab off the rank, if you like, in terms of the goalkeepers, Jordan Holmes as well. So, yeah, I think important for him to, to go and get some games, yeah. Absolutely. Well, next up for the Cherries is Brighton and Hove Albion here in the FA Cup. We faced Chris Hughes in the side just a few weeks ago, so let's take a look at the highlights. Here's David Brooks, nicely fed by Joshua King now. Brooks onto his left foot, opportunity to shoot still. Brooks shoots! There it is for David Brooks! Thought about shooting once, then opened up some more space and drove it beyond the despairing dive of Matt Ryan into the bottom right-hand corner. Brooks is back on the score sheet, as are the Cherries, after three blanks in a row. 21st minute, one nil up on Brighton. Things stand at the moment. Everton could go back above them with a win over Newcastle tomorrow. In fact, they're not playing Newcastle tomorrow, are they? Here's Fraser curled in now towards Brooks for a second. David Brooks at the double. He won't score many headers in his career, David Brooks, but he hung in the air, got a contact on it, and the ball looped agonizingly over Matt Ryan and dropped into the corner of the net. And Bournemouth now at last do have some breathing space. Well, there we go, a double from David Brooks securing the three points for the Cherries. Chris, it's going to be a very different game tomorrow, isn't it, in the Cup? I think so. It's a difficult game in the calendar for both teams. Um, there's only two All-Premier League ties in the, in the third round of the competition. Um, Bournemouth against Brighton and Wolves against Liverpool. Uh, I, I imagine it's going to be the same for both teams in that they've both had a heavy Christmas period of fixtures. They've probably got one or two knocks uh, carrying in the squad. Uh, so both will make changes. Um, just doing a bit of early research on Brighton, you know, a lot of their players that they're likely to change... I guess I haven't I haven't heard of I don't know much about there's a lot of sort of unknown foreign names in there as well so yeah how much Eddie and his, his staff have been able to glean and, and having not seen a lot of them as well um, whereas a lot of the Bournemouth sort of next I guess the next best players if you like the ones who haven't played as much are much more recognisable names so I imagine Brighton's preparation is probably a bit easier than Bournemouth for this game but yeah two teams in the same area of the table main priority is to stay in the league Brighton got to the, uh, the quarterfinals of the Cup last year, so they had a good run. FA Cup hasn't been good to the Cherries. Out in the third round to, to lower division teams in each of the last two seasons. Um, so, you know, I guess I mean, for, for one sense, if you're playing a Premier League team who are in the same boat as you, I guess at least you're sort of, you're, you're, you're matched, if you like, in terms of your ambitions. Whereas when you're playing a lower league team, they are clearly trying to knock out a Premier League team. So it's probably a, a bigger game for them, if you like. But Eddie said all the right things in the press or what you'd expect about, obviously they want to win it. Of course they want to win it. Um, they're professionals. Um, the game's sold out, which is brilliant. A lot of fans who don't get a chance to come and see the team very often will be able to come in the cup, which is also fantastic as well. So yeah, from that point of view, um, people always talk about the FA Cup being a, a good avenue for a team like Bournemouth to have some success. But that Eddie's hands are tied slightly because they have had so many injuries. They've had such a busy period, physically demanding games as well as the frequency of games, that he just has to make changes. And there will be players coming in who haven't played very much. Um, but, you know, they've, they've played in the League Cup recently, quite a lot of them. You think of the Jack Simpsons and people who've, who've played well at Chelsea recently in the League Cup. So quite a few of them are coming off the back of a, a relatively recent good performance. So hopefully from that point of view, they're, 
not not too rusty, if you like, in terms of match action. And in terms of the like, likes of Jack Simpson and Lee Smith, it's a great opportunity for them to go and get some minutes in front of a home crowd as well. Yeah, and Jack Simpson has been a regular in the League Cup, you know, for for a couple of seasons now. He was he was good at Chelsea, you know. They kept Chelsea out for a, a long time. It was only Hazard that came on and changed the game in the League Cup late on. Lee Smith, we saw him put in a great performance in that game as well. He's he's sort of again, he's always been ahead of Jermaine Defoe in the pecking order to come off the bench um, for for Premier League matches late on. I think he needs a goal, Lise. I think in those to really sort of take the next step in his confidence, it'd be great to see him hit the back of the net. So I'm sure he will be the, the number nine carrying the, the team's goal th scoring threat against Brighton in the Cup. So yeah, for, for those players, great opportunities. Um, Jordan Ibe, we've seen him in the Premier League recently. Uh, it'll be another chance for the likes of Rico, you would think as well. Andrew Sermon, probably I would expect to play considering he didn't play in midweek. Um, Jefferson Lerma is the interesting one because, of course, he didn't play at Man United. Um, so he's, he's had a game less than sort of a lot of the other regulars. There's a week to recover after this game, um, but they probably wouldn't want to take a risk with him. Um, that's the only thing I can think of in terms of injury. So uh, from that point of view, who knows, um, sort of centrally, Emerson Hyman's back, he's available. Would he go straight in? He's only just come back to the club, as we're talking on Friday. He's only just back at the club for the first time today. So I don't know if it's a bit quick to suddenly be in the team tomorrow. But uh, yeah, options ready to rotate. But like everybody, I'd love to see Bournemouth do well in the FA Cup. But it's, I think there, there are a lot of factors that make it difficult. Absolutely, and we saw them have such a good run in the Carabao Cup. Can they take anything from that going into the game? Yeah, any cup runs is 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 uh, good for confidence. Of course, it is. Um, the thing is, in, in this country, the FA Cup has that much more prestige than the League Cup. So I think if you are supporters at the start of the season, would you rather have a run in the League Cup or the FA Cup? Everybody would probably say FA Cup. I'm sorry if you prefer the League Cup, uh, but everybody would say FA Cup. I'm sure the final at Wembley in May. It's you know one of the biggest occasions in in world football, and people say you know with with teams rotating players and leaving players out. For a team like Bournemouth, who are you know top ten material in the Premier League, if the big guns are focusing on something else, uh, it's a great opportunity to, to go far. The, the, the raw stats are that the big six have won 27 of the last 32 FA Cups. So when you get to the latter stages, suddenly the stronger players start coming out. The, the top teams' rotated squads are better than, obviously, by, you know, by the natural uh, evolution of the Premier League squads, their next best players are better than Bournemouth's next best players. So from that point of view, it's a hard, it's a hard competition to go far in. You need some luck in the draw. Bournemouth have had no luck in the Carabao Cup when they've got to the quarterfinals. They've always drawn a big six team. Um, so a home game against a, a, a team of similar level is not a bad draw. Um, so if they could come through it then, and get a bit of luck in the next couple of rounds, they could, they could go far. We're not writing it off. People will think I'm sounding a bit negative, but it's difficult when you've got other priorities, put it that way. And you mentioned there that it's a home draw. That's a, that's a massive positive, isn't it? They wouldn't want to go somewhere too far away when they've got a big Premier League game coming up again next week. I mean, that was the thing about Steve Cook's equaliser against Wigan in the last uh, last season's third round because it, it set up a replay away at Wigan, which I'm not sure uh, was was it anybody's ideal, really, which the Cherries, of course, went on and lost as well. So, yeah, even if it went to a replay, it's only a, a little trip along the coast, thankfully. It's just the extra game that is is not necessary at this time of the season. So, yeah, home draw. And as I say, it's that, that's one thing that a lot of fans who can't get into the, the ground for Premier League will be hoping is, is home cup draws. Had three home cup draws in the League Cup, so a great chance for them to get in and watch the game. And, and it's nice to be, uh, and it will be, you know, Saturday lunchtime, it's a sort of South Coast clash. Brighton were here. They're probably sick of coming to Bournemouth, I'm sure, because they came here twice in the uh, in quick succession last year and have done the same again this year. But uh, they probably, their cars probably drive, them, drive themselves here, I imagine. But yeah, from that point of view, it's, it's, a, it's a decent game, yeah. And just finally, it's worth mentioning as well that we've got VAR here tomorrow. Yeah, VAR. We saw it at Chelsea, of course, um, in the in the League Cup, where a penalty decision was quickly referred and um, and sort of turned down, if you like. I mean, it, the, the more decisions that go wrong in the Premier League, it can't come soon enough. There have been too many decisions recently. Yes, of course, it's a hard job. We we know absolutely it's a hard job, but there have been there have been so many that have been wrong recently that it cannot come soon enough. VAR is coming in next season, so any game that has it has got to be a bonus. Um, they, they'll still be clangers. I'm sure next season we'll still be talking about how on earth has that gone wrong, even with VAR. Um, but you know, it, I think it, it certainly eliminates the the major errors. I'm sure if we had VAR here on Wednesday, then Decore would have been sent off, guaranteed. Absolutely. Well, that's all we've got time for today. If you are coming to the game tomorrow here against Brighton, we hope you have a great day and we'll be back next week to preview the game against Everton. Thanks for joining us.